the air, so don't worry about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to come out, but yeah. Anyhow, this has got to be a real exciting time to, uh, for you, though. I mean, uh, in your first couple of years, look at all the stuff that's gone on in, in Nashville here. Uh, I, you know, usually it was Vanderbilt losing was the sports scene in Nashville in years gone by, and now, or the sounds or something, and now look at it, you know, all this. It, you got the Predators playing for the Cup, and... Uh, expansion with soccer and the Titans are good again. I mean, this is and Vanderbilt is probably better than they were been in a long, long time. So, anyway, let's uh, come back here. Joe Rexrod writes for the Tennessean, and he is my guest right now. Our first segment. A little short, so I wanted to bring him back. Thank you. I, I want to ask you a couple of uh, other questions. Marcus Mariota, two hundred and yeah, five, excuse me, two hundred and five yards passing. I was much more impressed with the pass that he threw to win the game to Decker than I was, for instance, the deflected pass that he caught and ran in. As you know, as game changing as that may have been, let's face it, that was uh, you know that was kind of a fluke, if you will. Uh, threading the needle for the game-winning touchdown pass, that was, that was for me, the big impressive play for Mariota. But still, it's 205 yards. You know, he missed a wide-open man before he threw the pass to, uh, to win the game to Decker. So I want to ask you, do you think that this was a coming-out game for Marcus Mariota? Or does the quarterback who threw more interceptions than touchdowns this past season still have a ways to go to really be that uh, quarterback that you think can win the Super Bowl uh, for the Tennessee Titans? Yeah, it's, it's almost weird, Marky, because I'm writing a column on him right now, and I, I I'm, have a segment in about just what you said. The more impressive play was the dart to Decker to win the game. You know, the, the deflected pass, a, a crazy play, game-changing play, bizarre, second time it's ever happened in the NFL, first time in the playoffs. And that pass was probably going to be picked off by Marcus Spears if it isn't deflected by Carol Davis. You know, so, I mean, that's what, and if not, then, you know, it, it, it's complete. There's no way he was completing that pass, Corey Davis. I mean, it was, it was way too late with it, and there were defenders everywhere, and, you know, uh, maybe they maybe it's incomplete and they kick a field goal to make it twenty one six. But it was after that you know, that I thought he was so impressive with huge runs and passes to move the chain. So was it a coming out party? Yeah, I mean, I you know, look, he's played well. You know, it was his first chance to play out, and he came through big. I think what you saw, and if there's any question, and a few people have asked it here and there about whether he's the long term. No choice for the Titans. I mean, it's not a question um, because you know his intangibles, his talent, and you know the way his team loves him. And all those things matter. And uh, you saw that, like when he made that late block. I mean, what a great play to basically end the game. It gave Derrick Henry enough room to get past the chains again, and it was over. And the, the you know the way he was. Uh, you know, crowded around by his teammates. That tells you, told you a lot about what they think about him. So, you know, he, he still has growth to do, and I don't know if he's going to turn into this guy who can give you 350 and three touchdowns whenever you need it. You know, that's not what this offense is right now, but I think he proved a lot to a lot of people. I mean, this guy, the guy's a winner. He's an incredible athlete with all the ability in the world. And, look, he has a knack for making plays late in games. And, and even this year, as you mentioned, you know, the sport, the picks and TDs, he also has five game winning drives now in the fourth quarter. That's impressive. Very impressive. As was coming back from an 18-point deficit. But I got to tell you, I thought that the Titans' chance to win this game, in fact, I even tweeted out when they went down 14 to nothing, this makes me more confident 
that the Titans will win because I don't have any faith in the Chiefs secondary. They allowed a lot of yards this year, and I said, you know, the more you can open up the offense, ask Mariota to attack, the better I think that the Titans' chances were going to be. And hey, I'm a prophet, okay? I, I I'm, yeah, Joe Rexford. I know I'm also insufferable, but uh, no, but that that's uh, sort of the way that I felt. Now I realize that uh, statistically the New England Patriots also aren't all that. They've allowed a lot of passing yards this year, but they're still the New England Patriots. What do the Titans have to do to go up to New England and, and pull the shocker? Well, honestly, first of all, the way it's being regarded up there, I've noticed. I mean, they, they are, it, it is like a joke uh, in terms of media up there about, you know, like this is just a, this is a gimme, it's a bye week. You know, maybe, hey, maybe Tom Brady brings it around the field and then they blow them out. But I tell you what, I think the Titans offense that we saw in the second half in Kansas City can give the Patriots trouble and score points on them. You know, this is not a great Patriots defense. Um, no, it's not. Titans can be physical like that. Obviously, Mario has to play great. I think that they can, can score in this game. You know, and of course, this has been the whole thing all year with this offense. Hasn't been able to get out of its own way. It finally did. Now, defensively, I mean, you've got to. I mean, Gronkowski is going to be a huge issue. He is for everyone. This team struggles with great tight ends, was struggling with Travis Kelsey before he got hurt. It's going to struggle with Gronkowski. Uh, but, you know, you got to get red zone stops, and you got to try to get to Brady and, and pressure him. And, and you, you got to, you know, you've got to give yourself a chance with the defense. But, you know, you look at a shutout in the second half. Saturday, I think most of that credit goes to the offense. Possessing the ball and, and putting the pressure on Kansas City's offense, but still, that was a, that was a, a good defensive half. And so I, I think the Titans will have to win a pretty high-scoring game to win it. But I'm not convinced that they can't do that. Is Murray going to be available, or is nobody really knows at this point? Well, I think it's possible now this week. You know, they talked about it the last couple weeks, but there was really no way with the knee injury. Um, I think it's possible this week. Even if he is available, though, I don't think it's much of an impact on the game. I, I don't think he would get many snaps. I mean, we got to ride Derrick Henry right now. Yeah. Derrick Henry, you know, talk about coming out parties. I mean, yeah, maybe for Mario, but I think he's definitely be Derrick Henry. I would agree with that. The que I mean, if it's Murray starting over Henry in the future now. I mean, I think that this will be where those long knives come out for Malarkey, who is a guy I've covered before. Well, let me ask you this. What are your opinions in covering Malarkey? Because I've done it in the past. I found him to be someone didn't keep anything from you, which you loved as a journalist, a uh, pretty uh, honest guy and upstanding. And uh, I realize media relations are not all that makes a coach. Heck, look at the flip side and Bill Belichick. But uh, what are your impressions of Malarkey as uh, someone covering the Titans? Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he, uh, he gets, he, I think he's a little bit sensitive and sensitive at times. That, you know, he, he, he falls into the, if, after a loss or things goes wrong, if you add something specific, he'll fall into the, wow, well, you wouldn't get it anyway. It's a mistake. You know, coaches coaches have tons of information that we don't have, but it's actually easy information to understand if you just explain it. That's why we're there to ask questions for the fans. And sometimes I think he doesn't get that as well, but no, I agree. He's open about injuries. In the NFL, is anyway, he's pretty, he's, you know, he, he doesn't have a problem. He's not like a Belichick trying to hide everything. He's pretty open and Again, I think he's very respected by his players. I think they appreciate the way he treats them. He mm -hmm. has a good balance of accountability, but also, you know, treating them like pros. Uh, you know, it's not like he's trying to be a rah-rah college coach in here, you know. And, um, and uh, again, I, I think he's done a very good job overall. There are plenty of quibbles. I think the Titans, you know, I don't, I, I don't buy into the outdated team stuff, but as far as being too conservative, yeah, I think they've been too conservative and predictable in short yardage. Especially after all he's done so far is win. And, I mean, you might be able to, you want to 
get on him because the Titans didn't make it last year. Merida broke his leg, and then look what happened to the Titans after that. So, you know, now coming back and scrambling, I think that uh, coming out for Mariota, I think that uh, you might agree with me here. I think Mariota might always be the scrappy quarterback, not the 4,000-yard throwing quarterback, that sort of thing. But scrappy quarterbacks are okay. It worked for Jim McMahon. It worked for Joe Cap. It's worked for a lot of guys. So we'll see if it works in the future for the Titans beginning this weekend in New England. Joe Rexrod, let's not make that. It was a long time we talked to you before. Hey, so much stuff going on now. And uh, let's stay in touch here through the playoffs and such. Tri-City Sports Now will be back. The top 25 poll is out in college basketball. I'll tell you all about it when we come back on Tri-City Sports Now. Thank you.